we're always trying to catch the local wildlife on film. Traveling by boat can be precarious for camera equipment, to say the least. One splishy splash can end a movie prematurely, as we experienced here on this trip. We were trying to get the layout of all the marinas, and especially a good shot of all the boatyards here in the Rio Dulce using a drone. This did not turn out so great. As you can see, this footage is somewhat jumpy, which has something to do with the fact that little did I know at the time, this might be the last time that I ever see our yellow spark drone. Here at the dock located in downtown Fronteras, I waited for our dinghy crew to arrive back from their grocery shopping and then we rushed back to our sailboat to gather the fins and the snorkel mask. Either Robbie or I would have to dive into this lovely brown water right by the fish market, where we had purchased some excellent and freshly caught shrimp earlier, in fact. We would have to brave the murky fish water that awaits with who knows what kind of creatures lurking around in its depths. You want me to swing us around so you're closer? Huh? Or you want me to be right on top of you? Or so we arrived back at the crash site with the snorkel gear and the dinghy, and even though I put the drone in the water, Robbie kindly volunteered. <laughs> he can see all sorts of things underwater that I always seem to miss. <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> Let's battery out. Okay. Honey, it's salvageable. I'm gonna open it tonight and put in a bag of rice and everything. Take it apart. I know you're good at this. You're good at... <laughs> I fucking would have been looking around there for 10 minutes. I was touching it. Trying not to stir up the mud. The top is clear. The bottom is really murky. Yeah. It's not so shallow here. There's plenty of water, huh? Yeah, because there's... there's I almost hit the propeller coming up. With the battery off, we then rushed back to the boat to find some methods of removing water from the drone. First, we tried blowing air into it, which may or may not have been a good idea, as this might have pushed water into the pockets of the drone that didn't even originally get flooded with water. However, it was a fast way to ensure that the outer surfaces were dried quickly. Now to the most important part, removing what we can and letting it dry out. I've dealt with a variety of electronic devices that have been infiltrated by water and saltwater moisture. I think that the best results come from opening the device up early and letting as much moisture out as possible. The DJI Spark has six small and easily removable screws that open with our smallest Allen key in the set, with two of those screws hidden just beside the camera and the gimbal that can be gently pushed aside to unscrew. Popping off the case can be a little tricky if you do not have a strong plastic knife or a similar implement. So the metal knife would have to do, which can leave a couple of scratch marks on the casing, but it's totally worth saving the drone. On the inside, we encountered three small circular stickers that change color when they get wet. The stickers located at the back stayed white, while the sticker near the front end turned red. We found a blow dryer, put it to the lowest setting, and placed the drone in front of it for several hours, just far enough away that I could comfortably place my hand at the same distance without feeling any burning heat. We kept the drone in front of the hairdryer until I could no longer see moisture built up behind the glass of the camera, where, unfortunately, I think the drone took on the most water. It was an eventful day for losing items into the river, I guess. As a family passing in front of our boat on their panga suddenly lost the outboard motor into the drink. Robbie lent them his mask and fins to search for their motor, but the retrieval was shaping up to be a little more complicated than ours. Right before sunset, they had the good idea of dragging the net along the bottom to find the outboard. And it actually worked! They managed to pull the motor out of the water for salvaging as well. After going for his swim, Robbie became more and more interested in what fish were lurking around down there. We found these little guys, interested in some stale cereal, 
but they were also fairly carnivorous as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lions, a spot, it's a pink tail. Kept ourselves busy, waiting the several days for the drone to dry out. It's got teeth, it's semi predatorial. It's like a river piranha. A piranha? Maybe, they have very uh-huh. sharp teeth they have in the front, huh? If you and see if you can eat them or? Mm. Some flower, water, corn flour, just the, the various old flowers. We kept the drone in its case wrapped in a dry fabric for almost a week. We did not have any anti-moisture packets available. Beautiful little fish. After a week of drying. After a week of drying, we find out if this... I didn't put on that. I didn't snap it back on. We shouldn't snap it back on until we know if it's turning on or not. We used only the good battery to try turning it on again. (laughs) <laughs> the dog comes in. And we would have to dispose of the other one that went in the water. Yep, it connects to the... The camera's working. See? Why is it so slow? And for the first test flight, we wanted to take it easy. Let the drone hover just above dog jumping height. to take it easy, but immediately our drone was back to surveying masts again. What a little trooper. 